Hi. Um, today we're continuing with the cell group study. We're doing lesson 20 and 21 today. So, so lesson 20, the redemptive administration of the completion of the temple. The scripture reading is Ezra chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. I'll read it for you. Now, now, therefore, Tatenai, governor of the province beyond the river, Shethar Bozenai, and your associates, the governors who are in the province beyond the river, keep away. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God in its sight. Moreover, I make a decree regarding what you shall do for these elders of the Jews for the rebuilding of this house of God. The cost is to be paid to these men in full and without delay from the royal revenue, the tribute of the province from beyond the river. So um, we'll look at our cell group book in the introduction. The works of Zerubbabel temple construction, which was suspended, resumed during King Darius' second year, which is 520 BC of reign, on the 24th day of the sixth month, uh, Haggai chapter 1, verse 14 to 15. Finally, the construction of the temple was completed on the third day of the 12th month in the sixth year of King Darius' reign, 516 BC. Ezra chapter 6 verse 15 says, This temple was completed on the third day of the month Adar. It was the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. The people of Israel at last happily held a dedication ceremony to God. In this section, we will look at the redemptive administration contained within the completion of Zerubbabel's temple. So, number one. The proclamation that the Babylonian captivity would end in 70 years was fulfilled. So the answer is 70. God said that the Israelites will be taken captive by Babylon and would last 70 years. Jeremiah 29 verse 10 says, For thus says the Lord, when 70 years have been completed for Babylon, I will visit you and fulfill my good word to you to bring you back to this place. So from a temple-centered point of view, this prophecy has been fulfilled just as said. Solomon's temple was destroyed in 586 BC, while Zerubbabel's temple was completed in 516 BC. So the Israelite returned to fully restore the temple in 70 years. And then number two, for the fulfillment of God's word, God has de declared his word through his prophets. So the blank is word. Though the Israelites returned from Babylon, the works of the construction of the temple was halted. So God proclaimed his word through the prophets Haggai and Zerubbabel. In Haggai chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the second year of Darius the king, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Furthermore, Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah the prophet, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, saying, God proclaim his word through his servants in every generation for the uninterrupted progress and completion of redemptive history. And now number three, God even moved the foreign kings to achieve the word of God. So small number one, God moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, God moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, and liberated the Israelites who were in Babylonian captivity. Number two, God moved King Darius, had him support the temple construction, and prevent intervention. 
when the construction of the temple halted, God moved King Darius to support the temple construction and prevented the enemies of Judah from intervening. Ezra chapter 6 verse 7 says, Leave this work on the house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God on its site. And verse 22 also states, The Lord had turned the heart of the king of Assyria, King Darius who occupied Assyria during that time, toward them to encourage them in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Here, and had turned in Hebrew in the Hephil causative form of sabab, which means to surround. This means that God completely surrounded and encompassed the heart of the king, preventing the sinful heart from entering, and made the king wholeheartedly help in rebuilding the temple. And then um, small number two, issued a decree. The blank is a decree. Within the providence of God's sovereignty, King Darius I issued a decree to prevent others from interfering with the Israelites' construction of the temple. Ezra chapter 6 verse 8 says, Moreover, I issue a decree concerning what you are to do with these elders of Judah in the rebuilding of the house of God. The full cost is to be paid to these people from the royal treasury out of the taxes of the provinces beyond the river and that without delay. God is able to use even foreign kings and their power and wealth according to his will for the fulfillment of redemptive history. So what we read today, when we look at the first part, the proclamation that the Babylonian captivity would end in 70 years was fulfilled. So um, I want to point out this one part because... Um, that 70 years is calculated through when Solomon's temple was destroyed in 586 BC until Zerubbabel's temple was finished in 516 BC. So 586 minus 516, you get 70 years. And this is from a temple-centered point of view. And from here, we can see how God places importance on the temple of God. And... God works through his temple in the Bible. So we are all also God's spiritual temple. But the people, because they did not serve or worship God in the temple properly, that temple was taken away from them for 70 years. And in those 70 years, they ended up serving the Babylonians. So I receive a lot of grace from um, this one lesson. Why? Because God had prophesied that it had to be 70 years, right? And during this time, uh, as we are reading just now, remember that while they were building, there were many interference. There was enemies trying to stop them from uh, building the church, building the temple. So from 536 BC all the way until 520 BC, for 16 years, the work of rebuilding the temple stopped. It came to a halt. Now, can you imagine if you're doing God's work? I mean, it's something that you're sure that God wants. But then there comes like a lot of interference, a lot of enemies attacking you. And how would you feel? Maybe at that time you would feel disappointed, right? Or upset. Or hopeless, maybe. However, was this a coincidence? No. No. <laughs> it cannot be a confidence, uh, I mean, a coincidence, right? This is all within God's divine providence and sovereignty. If it did not stop for 16 years, it would not be 70 years. It would be 54 years. So God's word would not be fulfilled. Do you get it? So within that, that, that difficult time of not being able to build a temple, within the time where the enemies were attacking and everything, this is all still under God's providence. You know? So... Even in our life, there may be things that we are experiencing. Maybe there are things that we don't understand why this happened to me. Why has this made me not be able to grow or be able to fulfill the work that God has set out for me? But this is still all under God's providence. Just as long as we trust that what God has promised us will be fulfilled at the end. Right? So if we truly believe it, you know, we truly believe that His word 
will be fulfilled, then we shouldn't worry. Even though there are many trials in our lives, you know, but as long as we hold on to his word, everything will end according to his plan. So don't be hopeless. So the next lesson is lesson number 21. The temple that was built according to God's word. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry, because I didn't bring that iPad. Yeah. Okay, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28. It is I who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he will perform all my desire, and he declares of Jerusalem, she will be built. And of the temple, your foundation will be laid. Okay, I'll read this for you. Introduction. In 586 BC, Babylon invaded Jerusalem and entered the holy place where only priests could enter and looted all treasures and burned down the temple. The destruction of the temple in Jerusalem was the fall of the southern kingdom of Judah, and it was so shocking to the people of Israel. Even in midst of redemptive history, nearly being cut off, God constantly proclaimed the word of God through the prophets. The core of the word was about the restoration of Jerusalem, centered on the reconstruction of the temple. Indeed, it was a prophecy that gave God's people awakening and hope for the future, a great prophecy that penetrated history in this section. Let us examine the words proclaimed through the prophets. Number one, the words declared through prophet Isaiah. God promised to restore Jerusalem and the temple through prophet Isaiah. He prophesied in Isaiah 44 verse 28. It is I who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and he will perform all my desire and he declares of Jerusalem she will be built, and of the temple, your foundation will be laid. Isaiah was a prophet who was active from the time of Uzziah, the 10th king of the southern kingdom of Judah, until the 13th king, Hezekiah. When Isaiah proclaimed this word, Solomon's temple stood in its glorious form, and the city of Jerusalem was expanded to its maximum size far before the birth of King Cyrus of Persia, Media was a small city state that had just began to rise and Persia had not even appeared yet. However, God called the Gentile King Cyrus, the blank space is Cyrus, C Y R U S, as one who will perform all my desire. A bird of prayer from the east called for my purpose, and even Cyrus, his anointed, God had clearly declared that he will fulfill his will as he had purpose by even governing all nations. Number two, uh, I'll talk more about Cyrus later. Number two, the words declared through the prophet Jeremiah. God prophesied in detail through prophet Jeremiah of the restoration of the temple and worship. God declared that he will repair the temple that was trampled on by the Gentiles and that offerings would be given at the temple once again. Number three, the words declared through prophet Ezekiel. Prophet Ezekiel heard the shocking news that Jerusalem was completely destroyed in the 12th year of being in Babylonian captivity, fifth day of the 10th month in 585 BC. However, through the revelation given about Ezekiel's temple on the 10th day of the first month in the 25th year of his Babylonian captivity. So the following blank space, if you look in your books, is the 25th year of his Babylonian captivity. He knew the temple would be surely recovered and proclaim this to the people. So we've been reading about how all these prophets uh, prophesied about the temple. And number four, the words declared through the prophet Daniel. Prophet Daniel also foretold that the desolations of Jerusalem would be completed in 70 years and that the order to rebuild the city of Jerusalem will be proclaimed. And then number five, fulfillment of the words declared by the prophets. 
in the year 538 BC. So the blank space is 538 BC, first year of Cyrus. God stirred up the heart of King Cyrus of Persia to fulfill the prophecy of prophet Jeremiah. And he issued a decree for the people of Judah to return to Jerusalem and build the temple. So that blank space there is 538. So 538 is when Cyrus first issued the decree, and then 537, uh, that was the first return, right, when they went back. And then 536 is when they built the temple. Okay. So in addition to this, King Cyrus brought out the article of the house of the Lord that the king Nebuchadnezzar invaded, looted, moved out of Jerusalem into the Babylonian temple in 586 BC. Furthermore, he ordered the articles to be brought to their places and placed in God's temple. Indeed, the return of the Israelites from the Babylonian captivity and the construction of the temple were carried out, and God truly did all that he said through prophet Isaiah in regard to King Cyrus. God is one who fulfills Everything he has spoken through his mouth. And then in application, if there are times in which God's word have been fulfilled within our lives, let us share that in our cell group. So um, earlier we read about King Cyrus, right? Of if you have missed the answers, the first answer was Cyrus, the second answer was the 25th, and the third answer was 538 BC. So God prophesied about this Gentile king Cyrus, who was also called as God's anointed and a bird of prayer from the east. So only Israelites were anointed by God, but God chose this Gentile king so there must be a special meaning here. Cyrus isn't from Israel, but he's from another country. And in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1, he's told to open the double door, showing hope. And then it also mentioned he is a bird of prayer from the east. And in the Bible, um, the east is where the sun rises, right? And the sun symbolizes God in Psalms 84, verse 11. So in the end times, we also must go to the spiritual east to receive God's seal. So who is this King Cyrus? So these verses actually about King Cyrus is a foreshadow of the second coming Christ. A man, the Bible says, who will fulfill God's will and even conquer all nations. So another thing that is so amazing is that Isaiah knew his name even before this man existed, before he was born. And that is really amazing. So all the prophets that were mentioned, that we read, and uh, they prophesied about things that has not yet happened, and everything happened according to what they said. So from here alone, we know that God's words will surely be fulfilled. The Bible is God's word. All um, the prophecies about the first and the second coming Christ, it's all in the Bible. The end time, the signs, it's all in the Bible. All the blessings and the promises and the ways to get them, it's also all in the Bible. And that is why we need to keep reading and studying the Bible so that we can be confident and know that in our lives, everything that God has promised us will be fulfilled all his promises and covenants. Amen. So um, let us close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.